Story one of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lee Smalley. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. Uncle Wiggily and the Fox. Once upon a time, not so very many years ago, there lived an old gentleman rabbit named Uncle Wiggily Longears. He was a nice, quiet sort of a bunny, and he had lots of friends among other rabbits and squirrels and ducks and doggies and pussycats and mice and lambs and all sorts of animals. Most especially there was a muskrat lady named Miss Jane Fuzzy Wuzzy, who liked Uncle Wiggily very much. She made a crutch for him when he had the rheumatism. She gnawed it out of a cornstalk for him, and painted it red, white, and blue with raspberry jam. Well, Uncle Wiggily was a funny old rabbit gentleman. He was always having adventures, which means things happening to you, such as stubbing your toe, or getting lost, or things like that. I have told you some of his adventures in a book before this one, and also about how he travelled all around looking for his fortune so he would be rich. But he didn't find it for some time, though many things happened to him. The last thing that happened, in the book before this one, was that he tore his nice coat, and a good tailor bird kindly mended it for him. And he stayed at her house for some time, bringing up coal and sweeping the sidewalk, and things like that to be useful for Uncle Wiggily was very kind. He used to sleep in a hollow stump near the nest of the tailor bird, and one night it rained so hard that he had to go to bed and pull the dried leaves up over him to keep warm. All night it rained, and in the morning Uncle Wiggily got up, and he was hoping it had cleared off so he could travel on and seek his fortune and get rich. Out of bed hopped Uncle Wiggily. In one corner of the stump was his valise, in which he carried his lunch and clean clothes, and the like of that. The day before, a bad wolf had chased Uncle Wiggily, chasing him and tearing his coat, so that now the rabbit gentleman was quite stiff and sore. Still he managed to move about. "'Oh, dear me!' he exclaimed as he looked out of a hole in the stump, and saw the big raindrop still pattering down. This is a very poor day for me to find my fortune. Still, I can't stay in on account of the weather, so I will get my breakfast and travel on. He had some carrot and lettuce sandwiches in his valise, and he ate these and then looked out to see if the rain had stopped. But it had not, I'm sorry to say. Well, Uncle Wiggily said, I don't like to get wet, but there is no help for it. I'll start out. Then he happened to think of something. I know what I'll do," he exclaimed. I'll get the largest toadstool I can find and use it for an umbrella. Out he ran, and soon he had picked a big toadstool that made as fine an umbrella as one could wish. Then, strapping his satchel to his back, where it would be out of the way, the old gentleman rabbit hopped off, holding the toadstool umbrella over his head, and limping along on his barber-pole crutch and as he went over the meadows and through the woods he sang this little song, and sometimes when one sings it just at the right time, why, it stops raining almost at once. But it has to be sung at the proper time. Anyhow, this is the song. Splish, splash, drip, dash, how the raindrops fall. When the weather gets too wet, it isn't nice at all. Mr. Rain, oh, please go away, for my feet are wet, and you're splashing on my nose. What? You can't stop yet? Won't you please be nice to me? Make your raindrops dry. I am sure you could do this, if you'd only try. Dry raindrops are very nice, and if they would fall, we could walk in showers and not get wet at all. Well, as soon as Uncle Wiggily had sung this song, he looked up quickly from under his toadstool umbrella to see if it had stopped raining. But it hadn't, and he got a drop right in his left eye, which made him sneeze so hard that his spectacles fell off, and they dropped right into a mud puddle. 
ha hum exclaimed the old gentleman rabbit this is a pretty kettle of fish of course he didn't mean that there was a kettle of fish in the mud puddle but that was his manner of talking because he was so surprised a very pretty kettle of fish indeed cried the old gentleman rabbit and speaking of fish i guess i'll have to fish for my spectacles so what did he do but use his red white and blue striped barber pole crutch for a fishing pole and he dipped it down into the mud puddle and in a little while up came his glasses wiggling on the end of the crutch just like an eel that is my good luck said the rabbit as he wiped off the mud and water and put on his spectacles and he was just going to put his toadstool umbrella over his head again when he found out that the rain had stopped and he didn't need it then he left the toadstool hanging on a berry bush by the mud puddle to dry so that whoever came along next time would have an umbrella all ready for the rain well now that the sun is coming out i must be on the watch for my fortune said the old gentleman rabbit to himself and he peered first on one side of the road and then on the other but not a sign of his fortune could he see then all of a sudden he saw something shining golden yellow in a field close by ah that must be a pile of yellow gold exclaimed uncle wiggily now my fortune is made and he hopped over to the field but alas and alack a day instead of being gold the pile of yellow things were carrots well it might be worse said the rabbit at least i can eat carrots i wonder if whoever they belong to would mind if i took some i wouldn't mind a bit exclaimed a voice take as many as you like uncle wiggily and up jumped mr groundhog who owned the carrots take all you can eat and fill your valise said mr groundhog thank you very kindly replied the rabbit so he ate several carrots and filled his satchel with more and then he and mr groundhog talked about the weather and things like that until it was time for uncle wiggily to hop on again after his fortune but he didn't find it and pretty soon it came on toward night and the old gentleman rabbit looked for a place to stay while it was dark i think this will do he said when he came to a small stone cave i'll just crawl in here with my carrots and my crutch and in he crawled as nicely as a basket of shavings pretty soon uncle wiggily was fast fast asleep and he never thought the least mite about any danger but danger was close at hand just the same hark what's that creeping creeping along under the bushes eh what's that why my goodness me sakes alive and a piece of pie it's the fuzzy old fox yes as true as i'm telling you the old red fox had seen uncle wiggily go into the cave and now he was snooping and snipping up to catch him if he could oh i'll soon have a fine time said the fox in a whisper smacking his lips into the cave he crawled and in the darkness he happened to knock over uncle wiggily's crutch which was standing in a corner quickly the old gentleman rabbit awakened when he heard the noise up he jumped and he cried out who's there i'm the fox was the answer and i came to catch you but do you suppose uncle wiggily was afraid not a bit of it he ran to his valise and he took out a pawful of carrots with their sharp points and before that fox could even sneeze the rabbit threw one carrot at him and hit him on the nose for uncle wiggily could see in the dark then he threw another carrot and hit the fox on the ear and then he threw still another one and he hit him on the two eyes and that fox was so frightened and surprised that he jumped out of the second-story window of the cave house and sprained his toenail then he ran back to his den and didn't bother uncle wiggily any more that night and the rabbit slept in peace and quietness and dreamed about santa claus and ice cream popcorn balls but uncle wiggily had another adventure next day i'll tell you about it in a little while when in case someone sends me a mud pie with a cherry on the top the story will be about uncle wiggily and the bird's nest end of story one
Story two of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily and the Bird's Nest. Now I must be very careful today, said Uncle Wiggily to himself as he got up after sleeping in the stone cave, as I told you he did in the story before this one. I must be very careful so that fox won't catch me. So, very carefully and cautiously, he crept to the window of the stone cave house, and looked down, but the red fox was not there. The sun was brightly shining, and the old gentleman rabbit could see the big dent made in the soft ground, where the fox had landed when he jumped out of the window and sprained his toenail. My, that certainly was a narrow escape for me, thought Uncle Wiggily. Then he fried some of Mr. Groundhog's carrots for his breakfast, and, putting some of them in his valise for his lunch, off he started once more to seek his fortune. He hadn't gone very far before he came to a place where he heard a funny buzzing sound. It was just like a small sawmill away off in the woods, where the men saw logs into boards in order that houses may be built. "'Oh, my suz dud and a piece of red pepper!' exclaimed Uncle Wiggily. I must be careful, or I might get my nose cut off in that sawmill. So he was very careful, and after he had listened a while longer, he wasn't quite so sure that it was a sawmill that he heard, for he could hear a little voice crying, Oh dear, I'll never get loose, I'm caught fast. Oh, if someone would only help me. Ha! That is someone in trouble, said the rabbit. I am going to see if I can't help them." So he bravely kept on through the woods, and the buzzing sound became louder until, all at once, the old gentleman rabbit saw a nice good bumblebee caught in the web of a big black spider. The bee was all tangled up in the web, and it was his wings fluttering to and fro and up and down that made the buzzing sound. "'Ha! Can't you get loose?' asked the rabbit. "'Indeed he can't cried the big black spider lady, as she sat all hunched up in a corner of her web, waiting for the bee to get more tangled up and all tired out, so she could bite him. "'He'll never get away from me,' said the spider lady, sassy-like. "'Oh, ho! We will have to see about that!' exclaimed the rabbit. "'I am afraid you are mistaken, Mrs. Spider. I am very sorry to have to spoil your cobweb, but I must help my friend the bumblebee.' and with that Uncle Wiggily took his crutch and broke the web away from the bee's legs and wings so that he was loose and could fly away. "'I never can thank you enough, Uncle Wiggily,' said the bee to the rabbit, "'and if ever I can do you or any of your friends a favor, I will. Don't forget to call on me.' "'And if ever I can bite you, I will, Mr. Rabbit,' said the spider in her crossest voice as she set to work to mend her cobweb net so that she might catch someone else. Oh, but she was angry, though perhaps we can't blame her. Well, Uncle Wiggily didn't worry much about what the spider said, as he knew he was going to travel on for a long distance after his fortune, and he didn't think she would come after him, and she didn't. On and on hopped the old gentleman rabbit, sometimes going slowly and sometimes fast, and once in a while he would go up a hill, and then, again, he would go down. And so it went on. When it wasn't one thing, it was another. But he didn't find his fortune anywhere. Pretty soon, when it was nearly noon, Uncle Wiggily began to feel hungry, so he looked for a nice place where he might sit down and eat his lunch. He saw a shady tree, and he walked toward that, and, just as he did so, he happened to look up, and there, hanging from a branch, was a sort of brown-colored round object that looked like a small bag. "'Ha! I think I know what that is!' exclaimed Uncle Wiggily. "'That is the nest of a stingery hornet, and if I go too close I'll get stung. I'll just keep away and go somewhere else to eat my lunch.' Uncle Wiggily started off, but at that moment he heard some voices calling, and this is what they said. "'Oh, dear, how hungry we are! Oh, when will Mama come back? Oh, if we only had something to eat!' "'Hm!' 
I hope those hornets don't see me and come out to bite me, said the rabbit. And, would you ever believe it, the next moment those who had been calling must have seen Uncle Wiggily, for a voice exclaimed, Oh, good Mr. Rabbit, won't you please come here? We can't get out, and our mamma has gone to the store for something to eat, and she hasn't come back, and we're so hungry. Please help us. No, indeed, I will not, said Uncle Wiggily firmly. I don't want to be unkind, he said, but I am afraid you will sting me, you little hornets. Why, the idea, cried all the voices at once. We are not hornets, we are only little birdies, and this is a bird's nest. Why, bless my whiskers, exclaimed Uncle Wiggily, I believe I have made a mistake. Then he put on his glasses, and surely enough he saw that the brown object like a bag was a nest, and it was full of little birds who could not yet fly very much, for their wings were not strong enough. Now will you help us? the birdies asked the rabbit help us please do for we won't hurt you bless my whiskers of course i will uncle wiggily cried and he at once opened his valise and gave them all they could eat now i will go look for your mamma he said off he started but he had not gone very far before he heard the birdies in the nest crying help 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 uncle wiggily looked back and there was a great big ugly snake crawling up the tree to get the little birds. "'Oh, I must stop that!' exclaimed the rabbit, and back he started to hop to the nest. But he was quite a distance off, and he saw that he could not get back in time to drive off the snake. "'Oh, what shall I do?' he cried. "'If only the bumblebee would come along now and sting that snake, the crawly creature would run away.' and would you ever believe it if i didn't tell you at that moment along buzzed the bee and he saw the snake and stung him so that the snake was glad to jump away and not hurt the little birdies then uncle wiggily and the little birds thanked the bee who buzzed off to find some apple blossom honey and pretty soon the mamma bird came home from the store and she was very grateful to the rabbit for taking care of her little ones the reason she was away so long was because a boy threw a stone at her and made her spill the bread she had for her birdies. So she had to go back to the store for more. "'If you stay with us for a few days, we will help you look for your fortune,' said the mamma bird. And Uncle Wiggily did stay. And he had an adventure. I'll tell you about it on the next page, when, in case the popcorn ball doesn't roll off the table and bump the kitty's nose, the story will be about Uncle Wiggily and a big rat. End of story two. Story three of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily and a Big Rat When Uncle Wiggily had fed the little birds in the nest, after he and the bumblebee had saved them from the snake, as I told you in another story, the mamma bird said she could not do enough for the old gentleman rabbit. "'I will have my little ones sing a song for you,' she went on. "'Come now, birdies, sing for Uncle Wiggily.' So this is the song the little birds in the nest sang. "'Uncle Wiggily is good, Uncle Wiggily is kind, and we hope with all our hearts that his fortune he may find, gold and silver, diamonds too, ice-cream cones and candy sticks, and we hope that he can buy two red monkeys who do tricks.' "'Oh, that is a very nice song, birdies,' said the rabbit, as he took off his hat and made a low bow. "'But,' he went on, I don't know as I care for red monkeys who do tricks. What in the world would I do with them? Why, you could give them to us, and they would amuse us when our mamma was away, said a little bird, who had some feathers sticking crossways in her tail. Yes, I suppose I could give you the monkeys, went on the old gentleman rabbit, but I hardly expect to find any in my travels, especially red ones. Won't you stay to supper with us? 
asked the mamma bird and we would also be pleased to have you stay all night oh no she suddenly exclaimed i don't see how you can stay all night i can if you want me to said uncle wiggily for he thought perhaps the bird was afraid the snake might come back in the darkness and the old gentleman rabbit made up his mind that if the crawly creature did sneak up he would hit it with his crutch well of course we'd like to have you stay said the mamma bird slowly but the truth of the matter is that i have no place for you to sleep you see our nest is so small and besides i never knew of a rabbit in a nest except at easter time of course agreed uncle wiggily i never thought of that however it is very kind of you and i'll travel on until i find a hollow stump or some place like that where i can sleep oh mamma exclaimed a little boy birdie why can't uncle wiggily make a tent and sleep in it right near our nest he can pretend that he is camping out the very thing cried the rabbit i'll do it but of what can i make a tent we can give you the sticks and the cloth said the mamma bird so she showed uncle wiggily where there were some nice long sticks like fishing poles and some old sheets from a bed that no one wanted that will make a fine tent said uncle wiggily and i'm sure i will sleep in it very nicely so he set to work to make the tent first he stuck one stick in the ground and then he stuck another stick in and then still another until he had about seven sticks sticking around in a circle next the mamma bird pulled them together at the top just like the indians tents in the wild west show and then she and all the other little birdies tied them with blades of grass for strings and helped put the cloth around to cover up the sticks then if you'll believe me and i hope you do there was the tent pointed on top and round at the bottom just like those chocolate drops with white cream inside that are so nice and soft ha this is a very fine tent indeed exclaimed uncle wiggily now i'll move my valise and crutch inside and i'll feel right at home and we'll help you make your bed said the little birds and away some of the strongest of them flew around gathering up in their bills dozens of soft leaves and soon they had made as fine a bed almost as baby's crib then supper was ready and now let me see what did they have for supper oh i know there was some rose-leaf pie and some violets with sugar on and some bird seed boiled in molasses and for uncle wiggily there was the loveliest turnip cake with carrot frosting on top that you have ever seen oh it was most delicious and it makes me hungry even to typewrite about it and i'm sure you would like it if you had some now it's bedtime for you birdies said the mamma and she sang them a little lullaby and soon their eyes were tightly shut yes and i guess i had better get in my tent said the rabbit so in he crawled beneath the cloth that was stretched over the poles down upon the bed of leaves he lay and soon he too was fast fast asleep well along about in the middle of the night uncle wiggily was awakened by hearing something scratching on the side of the tent ha hum i wonder what that can be he asked perhaps it is the bad snake coming back if it is i must get ready with my crutch so he reached out in the darkness to get hold of the crutch and just then he saw a light flickering and a moment later something big and black with long whiskers and long sharp teeth came right inside the tent and uncle wiggily saw that it was a big rat and that rat had a bottle and in it were a lot of flickering lightning bugs and that was the lantern the rat carried so that he could see in the dark oh hello so you're in here eh asked the rat as he waved his whiskers to and fro at uncle wiggily well i'm disappointed why so asked the rabbit as he got his crutch and stood ready to hit the rat in case he sprang forward to use his sharp teeth why are you disappointed because i thought the birds were in here said the rat i mean to take them all off to my den and make them sing me to sleep but since you are here 
I'll begin on you first, and then I'll go out and pull down the bird's nest. Oh, no, you can't do that, said Uncle Wiggily firmly. Why not? asked the rat, surprised like. Who will stop me? I will, bravely cried Uncle Wiggily, and with that he raised his crutch, and he tickled that rat right on the end of his long tail. And the rat was so surprised that he thought he had been struck by a policeman's club. So he jumped around, and as he did so, Uncle Wiggily threw a piece of cherry pie at him, and it was all soft and squashy-like, and the juice ran down in the rat's eyes, and so blinded him that he couldn't see to bite the rabbit or even a piece of cheese. "'Now, you get right out of this tent, and don't you dare to harm the birds!' cried the old gentleman rabbit, and that rat went right out, taking his long thin tail with him, but forgetting his lightning-bug lantern which he left on the ground. So Uncle Wiggily looked out to make sure that the rat didn't go near the bird's nest, and the bad creature didn't, but he scurried back to his hole in the rocks, feeling quite savage-like and more disappointed than ever. Next the rabbit took the cork out of the rat's bottle lantern, and he let the poor lightning-bugs go, and they were very thankful and then the rabbit stretched out on the leaves again, and went to sleep until morning, and nothing more disturbed him. Now, if the knives and forks don't jump up and down on the table, and upset the sugar bowl, so that it scares the vinegar bottle, I'll tell you next about Uncle Wiggily on a raft. End of story three Story four of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily on a Raft. Well, I think I will be traveling along now, said Uncle Wiggily to the bird family the next morning after he had the adventure with the rat. I must have another try at finding my fortune, and perhaps since you sang such a nice song for me yesterday, you little birds will sing another as I am leaving. Of course they will, said their mamma, so she gave a few trills and chords to start them off, and the birdies sang this. Dear old Uncle Wiggily, we wish that you could stay, and live near our nest always, to drive the rats away. But if you now must leave us, then we will wish for you that you may have much happiness, whatever you may do. I'm sure that's very nice, said the rabbit, and now I'll bid you good-bye and travel on. But you must take some lunch with you, said the mamma bird, and she gave him some more cherry pie to make up for the piece he had thrown at the rat. Uncle Wiggily went on and on, and pretty soon he came to a place in the woods where there was a tall tree and some distance up from the ground there was a hole in this tree trunk. Ha hum! exclaimed Uncle Wiggily. Perhaps there may be gold in that tree hole. Now, if I could only climb up to see, I might find my fortune. Well, you know how it is with rabbits. They can't climb a tree even as well as a girl can. And, of course, Uncle Wiggily had to remain on the ground. If only Johnny or Billy Bushytail were here now, thought the rabbit, those squirrel boys could climb the tree for me. But I know what I'll do. I'll tie a stone to a string, and I'll put some molasses on the stone, and throw it up into the hole in the tree. Then, if there is any gold there, it may stick to the molasses on the stone, and I can pull some down. So he did this, and he made the string fast to the stone, and was all ready to throw it up when he happened to remember that he had no molasses. "'How careless of me! What shall I do?' he exclaimed. And a voice answered, "'I will give you some molasses, Uncle Wiggily.' The old gentleman rabbit looked around, and there was a nice green grasshopper, and, as she had some molasses with her, she put quite a lot on the stone. Then the rabbit threw it up at the hole in the tree, but a most surprising thing happened, for, instead of being gold in the hole, there were two unpleasant old owls there, and when the molasses-covered stone popped in on them, 
it awakened them from their sleep for owls sleep in the daytime and fly about at night you know who threw that stone cried one owl i don't know answered the other owl and she gnashed her sharp beak but whoever it was i'm going to bite him oh run run for your life uncle wiggily cried the grasshopper as the two owls stuck their heads out of the hole in the tree hop away so uncle wiggily hopped off and the grasshopper hopped also and the two owls flopped down after them but the savage birds could not see very well in the daytime and one went kerpunk into a tree and the other went kerthump into a briar bush and they were all tangled up and so uncle wiggily and the grasshopper got safely away well i didn't get any fortune that time said the rabbit sorrowfully as he hopped down a hill but perhaps i may find it soon the next place he came to was a big river and as he stood on the bank and looked across it seemed to uncle wiggily that he could see a big field of gold on the other side i must get over there he said to himself and i am sure i will find my fortune but how am i going to do it that river is too wide for me to jump across and it is too wide for me to swim if i only had a boat i would be all right the old gentleman rabbit looked around for a boat but none was at hand then he happened to think of something that sammy and susie littletail once did that's what i'll do exclaimed uncle wiggily i'll make a raft so he got some planks and boards and sticks and he laid them crossways one upon the other and tied them together with strong pieces of wild grape vine then he had a raft on which he could sit and push himself across the river almost as well as if he had a rowboat now i'll put my valise on board and hop on myself and away we'll go he cried and he was very much pleased with the raft that he had made into the water he shoved it and in the middle of the raft he placed his valise then he got on and shoved off using his crutch for a pushing pole out into the middle of the river went uncle wiggily on the raft and he was having a fine sail then all at once he felt hungry so he stopped pushing the raft opened his valise and took out a piece of cherry pie well as true as i'm telling you just as he was eating it he heard a swirling noise in the water behind him and a savage voice cried out ha now i have you give me that piece of cherry pie or i'll upset the raft and you'll get all wet uncle wiggily looked around and there swimming right up to him was a big snicky snooky water rat a second cousin to the rat that got into uncle wiggily's tent the night before give me that pie cried the rat as she put her claws on the raft give it to me no indeed i will not replied uncle wiggily as politely as one can speak to a rat then the bad creature tried to climb up on the raft but the rabbit took his crutch and put it down in the water and pushed along on the bottom of the river sending the raft along very swiftly oh i'll get you yet cried the rat as she swam on after the raft faster and faster she swam and faster and faster did uncle wiggily push until he was all tired out and he felt sure he would be caught and carried away by the bad rat and then a voice in the air overhead suddenly cried out take your handkerchief uncle wiggily and make a sail out of it then the wind will blow you along so fast that the rat can't catch you make a sail and uncle wiggily did so he stuck the crutch up for a mast on the raft and then he fastened his largest red handkerchief to the crutch and the wind caught it and blew upon that red handkerchief sail and the raft skimmered over the river so fast that the bad rat was left far far behind and so couldn't catch the rabbit it was the kind mamma bird who had called to the rabbit gentleman to tell him what to do and in a little while uncle wiggily was safe on the other shore and he hopped off the raft and ran toward the field that looked as if it was filled with gold 
whether he found any or not and what happened to him i'll tell you on the next page when the story will be about uncle wiggily in a boat that is if our puppy dog doesn't sit down in the fly paper and get so stuck up so he can't gnaw a bone when he goes to the kitten's party end of story four story five of uncle wiggily's fortune by howard roger garris this librivox recording is in the public domain uncle wiggily in a boat when uncle wiggily got to the edge of the yellow golden colored field after jumping off the raft as i told you in the story before this one the old gentleman rabbit rubbed his eyes and then rubbed them again for he wasn't quite sure of what he saw why he exclaimed as he put on his spectacles in order to see better i have made quite a mistake this isn't a field of gold at all it is only a field of goldenrod which is a flower ah if it is goldenrod perhaps if you wait long enough it will turn into chunks of gold said a little voice down on the ground and glancing there uncle wiggily saw a little ant with a tiny loaf of bread on her back why don't you wait for that to happen mr rabbit she asked oh it would never happen said uncle wiggily this golden rod is a flower and it will always remain a flower i am disappointed once more about finding my fortune i thought when i saw this shining yellow color from my raft after i got away from the rat that i had found the gold for which i am looking but never mind this flower is very pretty and he picked a bunch of it and smelled of it and some of the yellow dust of the posy blossom got up the rabbit's twinkling nose and he sneezed so hard that his glasses fell off but the ant kindly picked them up for the old gentleman though he had to reach over to take them from her as she was so small that she hardly came up to the rabbit's knee well i must get home to my little ones said the ant with a loaf of bread i hope you have good luck uncle wiggily thank you very kindly spoke the rabbit and then he put a golden rod flower in his buttonhole and hopped on to look for his fortune pretty soon not so very long in a little while the rabbit came to a nice smooth rock which was long and slanting just like a hill down which you slide on your sleds in the winter time only of course there was no snow or ice now as it was summer ha now if i was a little younger and didn't have the rheumatism i'd slide down that rock exclaimed the rabbit i wish sammy and susie littletail were here for they would enjoy this very much and so would johnny and billy bushytail the squirrel brothers not to mention the puppy dogs then the rabbit looked at the nice smooth rocky slide and all of a sudden he heard a voice singing lumps of pudding and pieces of pie my mamma gave me when i was a boy and for those things i used to cry for lumps of pudding and pieces of pie hmm i wonder who that can be asked uncle wiggily and then he heard someone laugh and shout and a great big boy about as big as two barrels of molasses burst out of the bushes why it's the giant's little boy exclaimed uncle wiggily in great surprise yes that's who i am cried the boy who was as large as two barrels of molasses and a can of condensed milk besides how are you uncle wiggily have you found your fortune yet no said the rabbit a bit sadly i have not never mind spoke the giant's little boy come on and have a slide it's lots of fun and with that the big boy threw himself down on the smooth rock just as if he were on a sled and away he whizzed down the hill as nicely as a cake of soft soap slips into the bathtub i believe i will try it exclaimed the old rabbit gentleman so taking a firm hold of his crutch and valise he sat down on the smooth rock and away he whizzed down after the boy who was as big as two barrels of sweet molasses and an ice-cream cone also faster and faster went the rabbit and faster and faster went the giant's little boy 
until, all of a sudden, the boy slipped off the stone and landed in a big pile of hay, and wasn't hurt at all. I wonder if that's what will happen to me, thought Uncle Wiggily, and he was just looking to see where he would land, and he was hoping it would be in a feather bed, when, as quickly as you can catch an alligator, if ever there's one to catch, the old gentleman rabbit slid off the rock, and down he came, plump on top of a big toadstool, and he wasn't hurt a bit, only sort of jounced up and down like. My, that was a fine slide, he said. Then he looked up and he saw that he was right on the shore of a little lake, and close at hand was a rowboat with oars in, and on the boat was a sign which read, Please take a ride in me on the lake. Ha! That is very polite of someone, said the rabbit. I believe I will take a ride in the boat, and perhaps I may find my fortune in it. Then he looked more carefully, and he saw that there was a box in the boat, and on the box was a sign which read, Please do not open this box. Hmm! Perhaps there is gold in there, but I won't open it to see until someone tells me I may, thought the rabbit. So he got into the boat, and he stuck the oars through the oarlocks, which are places made for them. Then he dipped the wide part of the oar into the water, and pulled on the handle part, and, my land sakes, flopsy-dub, Uncle Wiggily was rowing as nicely as you please. Well, he rowed on and on, until he was out in the middle of the lake, and then, all of a sudden, he heard a funny noise inside the box. It was a sort of scratching, growling noise, and before the rabbit could do anything, the top of the box flew open, and out stepped a little black bear. Oh, but Uncle Wiggily was frightened. Aha! Now I have you, just where I want you, Mr. Rabbit, said the bear. This is the last of you. Burr! Well, Uncle Wiggily was so frightened that he didn't know what to do for he surely thought his end had come. Then he happened to remember that he had some cherry pie in his valise, and he knew that bears are very fond of sweet stuff. I know what I'll do, thought the rabbit. I'll give the bear some pie, and when he isn't looking, I'll row toward shore, and perhaps I can get away from him. So he quickly opened his satchel, took out the pie, and gave it to the bear most politely. Ha! This is very good, said the bear in a grillery, growlery voice, as he took the pie. I will eat this first, and afterwards I'll attend to your case. And when the bear was eating the pie, and licking the sweet red juice off his clawy paws, Uncle Wiggily rowed toward shore. But he wasn't yet quite near enough to jump out of the boat, so he gave the bear another piece of pie, and rowed a little closer to shore. The bear was so interested in eating the cherries from the pie, and sucking the juice off his paws, that he never noticed what was going on. But finally he glanced up, and when he saw how near the shore the rabbit had rowed the boat, the bear cried, "'Aha! So that's your trick, eh? Well, I'll scratch you anyhow.' And with that he made a spring for the rabbit, but Uncle Wiggily was too quick for him. Grabbing up his crutch and valise, the rabbit jumped out of the boat and landed on shore, and then the wind suddenly sprang up and blew the boat and bear in it out into the middle of the lake, and Uncle Wiggily was safe, I am glad to say, for the bear couldn't swim to shore that day on account of having no bathing suit. Then, hopping on, Uncle Wiggily looked all over for his fortune, but he did not find it right away, and he had another adventure soon. What it was, I'll tell you almost immediately, which is very soon, when, in case the pink cow doesn't eat the chocolate pudding, from off the back stoop where the cook sets it to cool, the next story will be about Uncle Wiggily at the seashore. End of story five Story six of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily at the Seashore One morning Uncle Wiggily was hopping along a dusty road, 
It was the day after he had gotten away from the bad black bear in the boat, and the old gentleman rabbit was thinking of what great danger he had been in. I must certainly be more careful, he thought, and not get in every boat I see. Why, just think of it! If that bear had eaten me up, I couldn't search for my fortune any more. And this so frightened Uncle Wiggily that he looked all around and behind the bushes, fearing the bear might, after all, have come ashore and be chasing after him. But no bear was there, for he had fallen out of the boat and caught cold and had to go to bed, after drinking some hot honey lemonade. The old gentleman rabbit felt better when he saw there was no bear, but it was so hot that he was thirsty, so he looked for a place to get a drink. Pretty soon he saw a nice cold spring, and he took three drinks of water and part of another one. And just as the rabbit was drinking the last drop of water, he heard a funny noise out in the road, and, looking up, he saw a whole lot of children going past. Some of them were barefooted, and some had little tin pails and shovels in their hands, and some had red balloons, and some blue or green ones. Some of the children had on bathing suits, and a few had their little dresses tucked up as far as they could go, and they were dancing along on their slim white legs, as happy as happy could be. "'Why, this certainly is very strange,' thought the rabbit. "'I wonder where they can all be going. Perhaps it is to a circus parade. I must go see, for I might meet my friend the elephant there. Oh, this will be some fun. Is it a circus parade?' he called out. "'No, it isn't a circus parade,' said a voice at Uncle Wiggily's side, and, looking down, the old gentleman rabbit saw the kind of grasshopper who had once given him some molasses. "'If it isn't a circus parade, what is it?' asked the rabbit. "'These children are going to the seashore, to bathe and paddle in the salty ocean waves,' went on the grasshopper and some of them will build sand-houses, or dig wells for the water to fill up. Why don't you go, Uncle Wiggily? Perhaps you may find your fortune there." "'I believe I will,' said the rabbit. "'Won't you come along?' Well, the grasshopper said he would, so off they hopped together, the hopper-grass, I beg your pardon, I mean the grasshopper, and the rabbit. Pretty soon they heard the noise of the waves pounding on the sandy shores and they could smell the salt breeze, and it made them hungry for clam chowder, and lobsters and crabs and things like that. Then they saw ever so many more children running along, and in a little while they were at the seashore. "'Well, now to look for my fortune,' said the rabbit, as he watched the waves rush up on the sand with a big noise and lots of foam, and then they would tumble out to the sea again. How do you think I had better go about it, Mr. Grasshopper?" "'If I were you, I would dig in the sand,' said the grasshopper. Sometimes men, who were called pirates, used to bury gold in the sand, and perhaps there is some of their money left. You dig, and I will watch you.' "'But I have nothing with which to dig,' said the rabbit. "'Oh, you may take my shovel,' said a little girl with her dress tucked up high so that it would not get wet. I am going in waiting, so I won't need it." "'Thank you kindly,' said the rabbit gentleman to the little girl, and then she went in waiting, and a wave splashed up all over her, no matter if her dress was above her knees, and her mamma called to her to be more careful and not to get so wet. So Uncle Wiggily began to dig. Deeper and deeper he dug in the sand, while the grasshopper watched him and every few minutes Uncle Wiggily would look down the hole to see if there was any gold among the grains of sand. But there wasn't any. All around were children having lots of fun. One boy made a tunnel, and then he played that some sticks of wood were steam cars, and he pushed them through the tunnel and puffed out his cheeks to pretend it was the engine choo-chooing. And a little girl made a garden in the sand, with seaweed for flowers and clamshells for a house, and she and another little girl had a play party. Oh, it was great fun! Then a big boy stretched out on the sand, and another boy covered him all up, from the tips of his toes to the tips of his nose, 
and he left his nose out so the boy could breathe. Well, the grasshopper and Uncle Wiggily looked at all this fun going on, and they were happy as they could be. And the rabbit kept on digging the hole down in the sand, hoping he would soon come to the gold. And then, all of a sudden, before you could count up to forty-leven, the hole which Uncle Wiggily was digging filled up with water, just like a well. "'Oh, my!' exclaimed the rabbit. "'This is certainly bad luck. Now I can't find any gold. What am I to do?' "'I guess you'll have to dig another hole,' said the grasshopper. "'But perhaps there is gold at the bottom of this one, after all. Let's get a pail and dip out the water, then we may see the gold.' So the little girl, who had loaned the rabbit her shovel, let Uncle Wiggily take her pail to dip out the water. But the funny part of it was that the faster he dipped out the water, the more came in, until there was enough for two wells. Then even the grasshopper helped dip out the water with another little pail, but it did no good. The rabbit and the grasshopper were both so interested in what they were doing that they didn't notice a big crab crawling up behind them, and the first thing they knew Uncle Wiggily felt someone pinch him on his little short tail. "'Ha! What is that?' he cried, turning around quickly, and then he saw the crab, with its big blue claws, pinching him. "'Ouch! Oh, my!' cried the rabbit. "'Whatever shall I do?' "'I'll help pull him off!' shouted the grasshopper, but he was not strong enough, and the crawly crab still clung to the rabbit's tail. "'Why are you pinching me?' asked the rabbit, as he tried to reach around and pull off the crab only he found he could not do it. "'I am pinching you because you dug a hole down in my sandy beach,' said the crab, "'and I am going to hold on to you until you give me a thousand pieces of cheese for my supper.' "'Oh, I can never get that many,' cried the rabbit. "'Will no one help me get away from this crab?' But all the children had run home to dinner, and there was no one to help the rabbit, until all of a sudden a big wave washed up and almost covered Uncle Wiggily. He could just manage to breathe, and he sprang up on the beach to get beyond the water, and the grasshopper hopped out of the way also. But the wave was a good one after all, for as soon as the crab felt the water sloshing up around him, he let go of the rabbit's tail to swim away. And that's how Uncle Wiggily was saved from the crab, even if he didn't find any gold and he was very glad his tail wasn't pinched off. The old gentleman rabbit remained at the seashore for several days, and he had many adventures. And, in case I find a peanut shell with a red popcorn ball inside of it, the next bedtime story will be about Uncle Wiggily and the Big Lobster. End of Story 6 Story Seven of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily and the Lobster. Where are you going to stay tonight, Uncle Wiggily? asked the grasshopper of the old gentleman rabbit, after the wave had rolled up and washed away the crab that had hold of the bunny's tail. I told you about last, you remember. Are you going to stay at the seashore? asked the grasshopper, as he looked at his left hind leg and blinked his two eyes, sort of thoughtful-like. "'Oh, yes, I like it here very much,' said Uncle Wiggily, "'and I'm going to stay, but as true as I live, I don't know where I can sleep to-night.' "'Couldn't you build a sand-house, such as we see the children making?' asked the grasshopper. "'Oh, no, for in the night it might fall down on me, and the sand would get in my ears.' or a big wave might roll up on the shore and wash me out to sea. Oh, dear, isn't it a puzzle what to do when you are seeking your fortune? Oh, don't feel so badly over it, begged the grasshopper. We will look around and see what we can find. Where are you going to stay, Mr. Grasshopper? asked the rabbit. Who, me? Oh, I am going to crawl under a leaf and sing myself to sleep, as I always do but for you a leaf is hardly large enough. Not unless it was a palm-leaf fan, spoke the old gentleman rabbit, but come on, we will look around. 
so they hopped up and down the beach where the ocean waves were rolling along with a booming noise all the children had gone in by this time as it was getting dark and rather lonesome uncle wiggily and the grasshopper looked and they looked and they looked still more but they could find no place for the rabbit to stay at last the old gentleman rabbit said well mr grasshopper you had better get along and look for the leaf under which you are going to sleep or else it will get so dark that you can't find your way but what will you do uncle wiggily i don't like to leave you all alone oh if it comes to the worst i can sleep out here on the sands but i don't like to do it as the dampness will make my rheumatism worse but it can't be helped well the grasshopper didn't want to go away and leave his friend the rabbit all alone but uncle wiggily finally persuaded him that it would be best so the little creature hopped off and found a nice leaf then he curled up on the under side of it where in case it rained he would not get wet and he sang himself to sleep well now i must tell you what happened to uncle wiggily at first he was quite lonesome as he walked along the beach looking for a place to sleep but then he looked up at the stars shining in the sky above him and he saw the moon just coming up from behind the clouds and it was shining on the ocean waves making them look like silver and it wasn't quite so dark then i guess i will be all right said uncle wiggily bravely i'm not going to be afraid for i don't believe the alligator or fox or bear will come here but i do wish i had some place where i could go in out of the dampness then he suddenly thought of something i know what i'll do he exclaimed as he came to a pile of driftwood on the beach i'll make me a house of this wood and put some seaweed on top for the roof and in that i'll sleep as nicely as if i were at home well it didn't take uncle wiggily long to do this and soon he had built as fine a little wood and seaweed house as heart could wish then he crawled inside with his crutch and his valise and ate a small piece of cherry pie and stretched out on some soft seaweed for his bed in a little while he was fast fast asleep ha but what is this funny animal crawling up along the sand with his big claws like a pair of shears which the tinsmith or the plumber uses eh what's that why as true as i live it's a big lobster that crawled up out of the ocean to see what he could find to eat oh uncle wiggily had better look out now i tell you hadn't he but the poor old gentleman rabbit is still fast asleep the big lobster stuck out its bulgy eyes and he moved them this way and that way and he even looked over his shoulder with them and then he saw the little house which the rabbit had made ha i must see what is in that the lobster exclaimed and he crawled toward it perhaps it is something good to eat and i am very hungry he said so the lobster looked in through the little window which uncle wiggily had made and he saw the rabbit fast asleep oh ho now for a good meal cried the lobster then he took one big claw and he softly pulled away some of the boards which uncle wiggily had used to make his house that left a hole and through this hole the lobster stuck his other claw and he caught hold of the rabbit by his two ears oh who has me who is it what are you doing oh my poor ears let go please let go that is how uncle wiggily cried as he suddenly awakened no i will not exclaimed the lobster in a sort of boiled egg voice i am going to crawl off with you to the bottom of the ocean then this is the last of me and my fortune thought the rabbit i might as well say good-bye so the lobster pulled the rabbit right out of the wood and seaweed house holding him by the two long ears and he started down the sandy beach with him toward the rolling tumbling ocean uncle wiggily tried to get away but he couldn't well if you'll believe me the big lobster nearly had the rabbit in the rolling tumbling waves of the surf when suddenly a flashing lantern showed glimmeringly over the sand and a voice exclaimed shiver my timbers if the big lobster hasn't caught a rabbit 
Oh, ho! And he's trying to drown him. That will never do. I will save him. Yo, ho! Heave, ho! Uncle Wiggily looked up, and he saw a big, brown, life-saving man, who was out taking a walk along the beach with a lantern to see if anybody needed to be saved. And before that lobster could drag the rabbit into the water, that lifeguard just reached over and took the lobster up by his back, where the crawly creature couldn't pinch, and the lobster was so frightened that he let go of Uncle Wiggily's ears at once. "'Now hop away, Mr. Rabbit,' said the lifeguard, kindly, and you may be sure that Uncle Wiggily didn't waste any time hopping. "'I'll attend to this lobster,' went on the big brown man, and then the rabbit hopped back to his wood and seaweed house, where he slept in peace and quietness the rest of the night. And, as for the lobster, the man put him in a pot, and boiled him until he was as red as your coral necklace or your pink necktie, and that was the end of the lobster. So that's all to this story, if you please, but in case the clothes ringer doesn't squeeze all the rice out of the ice cream pudding, I'll tell you next about Uncle Wiggily and the little clam. End of story seven. Story eight of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily and the Clam. Uncle Wiggily awakened in his wood and seaweed house in the morning, and he rubbed his sleepy eyes with his paws. Then he got up off his seaweed bed, and as he heard a noise he exclaimed, Ha! That sounds like thunder. I wonder if we are going to have a storm. And, truly, there was quite a booming and rumbling racket outside. Then the rabbit laughed at himself. Why, how silly of me! he exclaimed. That is the waves pounding on the beach. I forgot that I was at the seashore. Now I must look out and see if there are any more lobsters waiting to catch me. Well, he was just peering out of the window, when there came a knock on the door, and Uncle Wiggily jumped back. My sakes alive and some baked beans! he cried. What's that? It is only I, said a small voice. I'm your friend, the grasshopper. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you, replied the rabbit. I'm coming right out. I must tell you about the terrible time I had with the big lobster last night. So Uncle Wiggily hopped out of the little house, and told the grasshopper all about it. And the grasshopper was so frightened that he kept looking behind him all the while, for fear the lobster might be coming after him. But we all know what happened to that lobster, don't we? "'What are you going to do now?' asked the grasshopper after a while, when Uncle Wiggily was washing his face and paws, and combing out his whiskers, which had some seaweed in them. "'Oh, I'm going to look for my fortune to-day,' answered the rabbit. "'I may find it, for I have heard that often very valuable things are cast up on the seashore by the waves. Yes, I think I shall find my fortune to-day. But won't you have some breakfast, Mr. Grasshopper?' I have some cherry pie left, and a few lettuce and carrot sandwiches, with parsley trimmings. Oh, I might have a bit of parsley, spoke the jumping insect, and he ate quite a bit of it, while the rabbit ate the other things. Then they both hopped along the beach, looking for a fortune of gold or diamonds for the old gentleman rabbit. And, just as on the other day, there were children playing in the sand, making little wells of water, and tunnels, and sand-houses, and gardens, and castles, and all things like that. But there was no chest of gold, nor bag of diamonds to be seen, though the two friends looked in every place they could think of, and in some other places too. "'I don't believe the seashore is a very good place to find your fortune,' said the rabbit, sadly, as he hopped along. And then he had to stop to take some sand out of his left ear. Perhaps if we ask some of the children, they may be able to help us, suggested the grasshopper. Well, they did this, but, though the children were very kind, they hadn't seen any gold or diamonds either. Then we'll ask some of the clams or starfish on the beach, 
said the grasshopper but the clams or starfish hadn't seen anything of the rabbit's fortune though they were very polite about it oh i know what let's do exclaimed the grasshopper what asked uncle wiggily we'll go bathing went on the jumping insect and that will cool us off and perhaps down under the water we may find your fortune the very thing cried uncle wiggily in bathing we shall go well the old gentleman rabbit could swim a little bit you know and the grasshopper could float on his back as nicely as a fat man can and together they had a very good time it was so warm that the water didn't make Uncle Wiggily's rheumatism any worse, I'm glad to say. Then, after a bit, the grasshopper said he thought he'd take a little hop on the sand to dry off, and that left Uncle Wiggily alone in the water. And now comes the second part of the story. The old gentleman rabbit was swimming slowly along, looking down under the waves every once in a while to see if there was any gold on the sand beneath when all of a sudden he felt something grab hold of his left hind leg oh my i wonder if that's the bad lobster again cried the rabbit and then he saw a most curious fish called the toggle taggle and this fish had hold of him oh please let go of me cried the rabbit no indeed i will not said the toggle taggle speaking under water and making a lot of bubbles come up from his breath i'm going to drag you off to my den beneath the rocks oh don't be so cruel begged the rabbit if you do that i can never find my fortune and i never can go back and see sammy and susie littletail again that makes no difference to me at all said the toggle taggle speaking in a thin watery sort of voice no matter of difference at all here we go and he started to drag poor uncle wiggily to the bottom of the ocean under the rocks ha i guess i'm not going as easily as that cried the rabbit and at once he began to swim as hard as he could toward land and uncle wiggily could swim pretty well when he tried let me tell you this time he swam so hard that he pulled the toggle taggle fish along with him and in a second or two uncle wiggily was out on the sand but the toggle-taggle still had hold of him. "'Dry land or water is all the same to me!' cried the odd fish, and then the rabbit saw that the toggle-taggle had legs as well as fins and a tail, and so he could walk on dry land. "'Now you come with me!' cried the bad fish, and he braced with his legs in the sand, and was pulling the rabbit back into the water again. "'Oh, will no one help me?' cried Uncle Wiggily, for he was getting weak, and just then a little voice whispered, "'Turn him around, Uncle Wiggily, so I can get hold of his tail. Then I'll pinch him and make him let go of you.' Uncle Wiggily looked, and there was a nice little clam on the sand behind the toggle-taggle, and the clam had his two shells wide open, ready to pinch the bad fish. Well, the rabbit at once began to push the toggle-taggle toward the clam, and the fish didn't know what this meant. But before he could say anything, his tail came right close to the clam's open shells, and in an instant that brave clam shut his sharp shells down very hard on the tail of the bad toggle-taggle, and held on tight. "'Oh, who has me?' cried the fish, and he turned around to see what it was, and with that, of course, he let go of the rabbit." and then Uncle Wiggily gave a big hop and got safely away. And when the toggle-taggle saw the clam, he was so frightened, for he knew that he couldn't bite through the hard shells, that the bad fish at once jumped back into the ocean, taking the brave little clam with him. But the clam didn't mind that. In fact, it was just where he wanted to go. So everything was all right. My, that clam saved my life and I didn't get a chance to thank him," said Uncle Wiggily, somewhat sadly, as he sat away up on the beach. But I will the next time I see him. Then the grasshopper came back, and had to hear all about what had happened. Then he and Uncle Wiggily went on looking for the fortune, and they had some more adventures before they found it. So, in the next story, if the doorknob doesn't drop off, 
and fall into the boiled eggs making a big white and yellow splash i'll tell you about uncle wiggily and the starfish end of story eight story nine of uncle wiggily's fortune by howard roger garris this librivox recording is in the public domain uncle wiggily and the starfish let me see where did we leave off oh i remember it was where the red monkey jumped up on the elephant's back and tickled him with an ice cream cone wasn't it no i beg your pardon i'm wrong i promised to tell you about the old gentleman rabbit and the starfish so if you're all ready and are sitting comfortably i'll begin it was the day after uncle wiggily had gotten away from the toggle-taggle fish that walked and the little clam had pinched the bad creature on his tail uncle wiggily was hopping along the sand at the seashore beach and he was looking all around for his fortune of gold or diamonds he didn't care much which it was so long as he got rich and could go back home i wonder what has happened to the grasshopper said the rabbit for he hadn't seen the jumping insect that morning here i am exclaimed the little chap and with a hop he landed down beside uncle wiggily on the sand where have you been asked the rabbit i was beginning to think that you had left me not yet but i am going to soon replied the grasshopper you see there is going to be a big jumping race back where i live and the hopper who jumps the farthest will get a bag of popcorn and as i think i will go back home to jump i came to say good-bye afterward i will come here again and help you to look for your fortune well uncle wiggily felt a little sad to have his friend the hopper grass go away but there was no help for it so they shook legs with each other the grasshopper gave a big spring and a jump and away over the sea he sailed to take part in the hopping races at his home well now i wonder what will happen to me to-day thought uncle wiggily as he walked along the beach looking down at the sand and listening to the waves washing up on the shore perhaps i may find a bag of diamonds he said and just then if you'll believe me he looked ahead and there on the sand was something that looked like a black bag with a long thin handle on it with which to carry it oh ho exclaimed the rabbit i believe that is my fortune he hopped forward intending to pick it up when all of a sudden the thing like a bag moved slowly along hm that's queer said the rabbit i never heard of a bag that could move i must see what this is so he went up a little closer and he saw that it wasn't a bag at all it was a queer creature with a long sharp tail like an ice pick or a black lead pencil and it was crawling along but the funny part of it was that uncle wiggily couldn't see any legs on which the animal walked stranger and still more strange exclaimed uncle wiggily what can that be if you please i am a horseshoe crab said a voice from under the black shell and if you lift me up you can see my legs how shall i lift you up mr horseshoe crab by my long tail like an ice pick was the answer and when the rabbit did this underneath a shell that was shaped somewhat like the hoof of a horse he saw the legs of the crab they were all covered up when the crab walked so no one could step on his toes that is very fine said the rabbit perhaps you can tell me where to find my fortune i'm sorry but i can't said the horseshoe crab and then he crawled on again very slowly and uncle wiggily hopped forward looking for the bag of diamonds or gold well in a little while it got quite warm on the sandy beach and the old gentleman rabbit felt sleepy he yawned and he twinkled his nose like two stars on a frosty night and then he said oh me oh my i think i'll lie down and take a little nap on the sands so he took some sticks and stuck them up in the beach and over them he put some seaweed to make a shady shelter and down under this he stretched himself very nice and comfortable well the first thing you know 
Uncle Wiggily was fast asleep. And now listen to see what happened to him. All of a sudden, up from the ocean, on her thin kinky legs, came a big sea spider, a creature something like a crab. She shot forward her big bulgy eyes, and she saw the rabbit under the seaweed shelter. Aha! cried the sea spider to herself. Here is where I have a good rabbit dinner. Slowly and softly she went on until she was quite close to the old gentleman rabbit, and Uncle Wiggily never awakened. Then the sea spider began to weave a web around the rabbit, just as a land spider weaves a web around a fly that gets into her trap. Strand after strand of the cobwebs did the sea spider throw around the sleeping rabbit, until Uncle Wiggily was as tightly fast as if he had been tied with ropes. "'Now I'll bite him, and that will be the end of him,' said the sea spider, and she was just going to do this when, all of a sudden, some of the cobweb blew down and tickled Uncle Wiggily on the end of his twinkling nose, and he woke up. "'Ha! What's this?' he exclaimed, and then he found that he could not move, for he was fast in the web. "'What does this mean?' he asked. "'It means that I have you,' cried the sea spider, wiggling her legs like a trolley car. "'Oh, please let me go!' begged the rabbit. "'Never, never, never!' exclaimed the spider. Then Uncle Wiggily tried, and he tried, and he tried again, but he couldn't get loose from the web. "'Oh, will no one help me?' cried the rabbit. And just then, if you'll believe me, the waves washed something up on the sand, close to where the sea spider had Uncle Wiggily fast. And that something was a curious little fish, shaped like a star. In fact, it was a starfish, with five sharp points to it. And that starfish heard Uncle Wiggily calling. "'I'll help you, Mr. Rabbit!' kindly exclaimed the fish. "'Now you get right away from here!' cried the sea spider for well she knew that the sharp-pointed starfish could cut her cobweb in a second. "'Keep away, or I'll bite you,' the spider said. "'Oh, you can't scare me,' shouted the starfish. "'I'm not afraid of you, and I'm going to help Uncle Wiggily.' So the starfish began to roll over and over on the sand like a pinwheel, a hoop, or a wheel that has no rim, and only spokes to it. Bumpity bump on its five points went the starfish until it was close to Uncle Wiggily. Then, right into the sea spider's cobweb, rolled the sharp pointed starfish until, with his points, he had cut the web all to pieces and set Uncle Wiggily free, as easily as you can eat bread and jam on Saturday afternoon. Now you get away from here, cried the starfish to the spider, and he threw sand at her until the crawly creature was glad enough to go back into the ocean where she belonged. And the old gentleman rabbit thanked the fish very much, and gave him a piece of lemon pie, because he was all out of the cherry kind. "'Now I must hurry on to seek my fortune,' said Uncle Wiggily, for the day was cooler now. So on he hopped, and he had another adventure. In case the dishpan doesn't fall down off the nail, and smash the watermelon all to pieces, so there's no supper for the little mouse who lives under the ice-box, I'll tell you next about Uncle Wiggily and the Slippery Eel. End of Story 9 Story 10 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily and the Eel My, how it did rain! The water just dripped down from the clouds, as if it came from a fountain turned wrong side up, and as Uncle Wiggily walked along the seashore beach, with a toadstool held over him for an umbrella, he thought he had never seen such a storm. "'But I can't stay indoors because it rains,' he said to himself, as he started out that morning to look for his fortune. "'That would never do. A little water can't hurt me, and besides, with this toadstool umbrella it isn't as bad as it might be.' 
So he hopped along, leaning on his red, white, and blue striped barber pole crutch, and with his valise strapped to his back, and holding the toadstool umbrella over his head. And he felt so happy, in spite of the rain, that he sang a little song. It went something like this, to the tune of Hum Tum Tum Tee Diddly Yum. I feel so very happy, no matter if it rains, for I don't ride on trolley cars, nor yet on railroad trains. Whenever I feel thirsty, I take a drink of tea, or, if I can't find any, why, milk will do for me. I haven't found my fortune, perhaps I never can, but I can hop upon the beach and beat an old tin pan. And just then the gentleman rabbit saw an old tin pan lying on the sand, and he went up to it and pounded on it with his crutch. Not hard, you understand, not so hard as to hurt it, but enough to make a noise like a drum. There, perhaps that will wake the people up, thought the rabbit, for the beach was very lonesome in the rainstorm, with no children building sand houses and no one in bathing. So Uncle Wiggily beat the tin pan again, and made a great racket. And all of a sudden, something glided out from under the pan. It was something long and thin, and it had a long, thin tail. "'Oh, my! It's the bad snake!' cried the rabbit. And he jumped back so quickly that he dropped the toadstool umbrella, and the rain came down on the end of his twinkling nose. He was just about to hop away as fast as he could, when the long, thin creature, who had been under the tin pan, exclaimed, "'I'm not a snake!' "'No? Then pray tell what you are,' asked Uncle Wiggily quickly. "'I am a slippery eel,' was the answer. "'Just see if you can hold me, and that will show you how slippery I am.' So Uncle Wiggily very politely took hold of the eel by the tail. "'But, my goodness me, sakes alive and a piece of ice!' In an instant that slippery eel had slipped away. "'What did I tell you?' the eel called to the rabbit, as he crawled back toward the tin. "'Well, you are certainly very slippery,' said Uncle Wiggily. "'I hope I didn't squeeze you too hard.' "'Oh, pray do not mention it,' said the eel politely. "'I am used to being squeezed, and that's why I'm so slippery, in order that I may get away easily.' "'I hope I didn't wake you up from your sleep under the tin pan,' went on the rabbit, who was very kind-hearted. "'Pray, do not mention that either,' said the slippery eel, who was very polite. "'It was time I awakened anyhow. But, since you have been so nice about it, if ever I can do you a favour, please let me know.' Then he stood up on the end of his thin tail, and made a low bow, and slipped into the ocean. Ha! That is a curious sort of chap, said Uncle Wiggily, as he hopped on. I should like to meet him again, when I have more time to talk to him. But now I must look for my fortune. So he went on looking along the beach in the rain, but never a bit of his fortune could he find. Now, in a little while, something is going to happen. In fact, it's time for it now, so I'll tell you all about it. As Uncle Wiggily was hopping along the beach, where some bushes grew close down to the water, he thought he saw something shining in the sand. "'Perhaps that may be a diamond,' he said. "'I'll dig it up.' So he got a nice pink shell with which to dig, and he set to work, laying aside his toadstool umbrella, and not minding the rain in the least. Then, all of a sudden, up behind the bushes came sneaking the old fuzzy fox. He had been looking all over for something to eat, but all he could find were hard-shell clams, and they were too rough on his teeth, so he couldn't eat them. "'Oh, but there is a soft, delicious morsel!' exclaimed the fox, as he saw Uncle Wiggily digging in the sand, and the fox smacked his lips and sharpened his teeth on a stone. "'Now I will have a good dinner.' he added. So he crept closer and closer to Uncle Wiggily, and the old gentleman rabbit never heard him, for he was busy digging for his fortune. Now the thing for me to do, thought the fox, is to spring out on him before he has a chance to move, 
and I think I can do it, because his back is toward me, and he can't see. So the fox got ready to spring right on Uncle Wiggily, and maybe carry him off to his den in the woods, and the old gentleman rabbit didn't know a thing about it, but kept on digging for his fortune. "'Here I go,' said the fox to himself, and he crouched down for a spring, just as your kitty does when she plays she is after a mouse. Up into the air leaped the fox, right toward the rabbit, and then suddenly a voice cried, "'Look out, Uncle Wiggily, look out!' The rabbit glanced up, but he was down in the sand hole, and he couldn't get out quickly on account of his rheumatism. Right toward him the fox was springing, and then, all at once, the slippery eel, for it was he who had called to the rabbit, the kind eel wiggled up out of the ocean. Up along the beach he crawled quickly, until he was right in front of the rabbit in the hole. Then the eel stretched out like a piece of rope and waited. And then the fox came down on his four feet, but instead of landing on Uncle Wiggily, he landed right on the slippery eel, and that eel was truly as slippery as a piece of ice. Right out from under him slipped the feet of the old fuzzy fox, and down he fell. Slippery, sloppery, slappery he went, sliding along on the eel, until he slid all the way off and plumped into the ocean, where he was nearly drowned, for the water got in his nose and mouth and eyes. "'Now you can get away, Uncle Wiggily,' said the eel, and the rabbit kindly thanked the slippery creature, and grabbed up the shining thing he had dug out of the sand, for he thought it was a diamond. Then the fox slunk away, taking his wet and bushy tail with him, and Uncle Wiggily was safe for that time, anyhow, and the eel wiggled along after the old gentleman rabbit, who thought he had better look for a good place to sleep. But he soon had another adventure, and I'll tell you what it was on the next page, when, in case the parlor lamp doesn't go out to a moving picture show and melt all the ice in the gas stove, the bedtime story will be about Uncle Wiggily and the Horseshoe Crab. End of Story 10 Story Eleven of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily and the Crab. My, that was a narrow escape, said the rabbit to the slippery eel, after the fuzzy fox had gone away, as I told you in the last story. I never can thank you enough. Oh, that is a mere nothing, said the slippery eel as he dug his tail down in the sand, modest-like. I am always happy to do a kindness for my friends. "'You are certainly slippery,' said the rabbit, "'as slippery as a rubber doormat on a wet day. But look at this thing which I dug up just before the fox jumped for me. I think it is a diamond, and if it is, I will get rich, and I can go home and see my little rabbit grandchildren, Sammy and Susie Littletail.' Then he held out to the slippery eel the shining object he had found in the sand. "'Alas, alas!' sorrowfully exclaimed the eel, as he looked at the shining thing. "'What's the matter? Isn't it a diamond?' asked the rabbit. Then the slippery eel said this in a sing-song voice. "'Alas, alas, tis only glass. It is no good to eat for food. It will not do for me or you throw it away, some other day your fortune may come past your way. Ha! I did not know you could make up verses, said the rabbit in surprise. I didn't know it either, answered the eel. That is the first time I have ever done such a thing. And once more he dug his tail down into the sand, real modest-like and shy. Well, if that is only glass instead of a diamond, I may as well throw it away," said the rabbit. Yes, agreed the eel, and with a flip of his tail he sent the glass spinning out into the heaving ocean. More bad luck for me, thought the rabbit, but he did not give up, and, bidding good-bye to the slippery eel, the rabbit set off down the beach to look for his fortune once more. 
by this time it had stopped raining and he didn't need the toadstool umbrella so he stuck it up in the sand in order that the next person who came along might sit under it and get out of the sun well uncle wiggily went on and on he saw the children in bathing and building sand houses and he saw the fishermen going out to sea to catch fishes and lobsters but he still couldn't see anything of his fortune then pretty soon in a little while not so very long the old gentleman rabbit came to a place on the sand where there was a little white card and on the card was some writing which read dig here and see what you can find ha hum i wonder what that means thought uncle wiggily as he sat down on the sand to rest himself i wonder if that can be a trick he had been fooled so many times that he made up his mind to be careful now so he looked all around but he couldn't see anything that looked like danger to be sure there were some bushes up on the beach a little way off but there seemed to be no one in them and there was no one on the beach near where the rabbit was i guess i'll take a chance and dig thought uncle wiggily so he laid aside his valise and crutch and began to dig in the sand with a clam shell deeper and deeper he went down until he began to feel something hard oh ho he exclaimed i guess i'm getting close to it this must be a chest of gold or diamonds that the pirates or robbers buried in the sand years ago now i'll dig it up and i'll be rich this is a lucky day for me so he dug deeper and still deeper until he had partly uncovered something black and round he thought sure it was a chest of gold and he dug faster and faster until all of a sudden something slipped in the sand and rolled out into the hole uncle wiggily had dug and before he knew it he found himself slipping down and there he was held fast by one paw under a big black stone it was a stone he had found under the sand and not a chest of gold at all at first he was too surprised to say or do anything and then as his foot began to pain him he cried out oh dear oh dear i'm caught in a trap and i can't get out no indeed you can't get out exclaimed a voice at the edge of the hole and looking up the rabbit saw a big wolf oh did you put that card there on the sand telling me to dig asked uncle wiggily reproachfully i did answered the wolf showing his teeth in a most impolite grin i wanted to catch you under the stone and i did the stone rolled out of the sand when you had dug down deep enough to loosen it and now you are fast i am going to jump down on you presently and tickle you until your ribs ache well uncle wiggily felt pretty bad on hearing this and he didn't know what to do the wolf was getting ready to spring down on him when all at once the rabbit heard a voice whispering down to him say uncle wiggily you just ask that wolf if he is a good jumper he'll say he is and then you ask him if he can jump on top of the round stone he sees on the sand near the hole he'll say he can for he is very proud but instead of jumping on a stone he'll jump on me and then i'll stick him with my sharp tail and he'll run away then i'll help you get loose but who are you asked the rabbit somewhat puzzled i am the horseshoe crab was the answer i'm up here on the sand and i look just like a stone and i'll pretend i really am one the wolf can't understand my talk so it's safe you just ask him to jump on me so uncle wiggily looked up at the wolf and said mr wolf since you are going to tickle me anyhow would you mind showing me what a good jumper you are before you do it of course not said the wolf who was very proud of his jumping i'll jump anywhere you say and then i'll jump down and get you very well said uncle wiggily slow and sad like just jump on that round stone up there on the beach will you i will said the wolf and he didn't know that what he thought was a stone 
was only the horseshoe crab waiting to stick him with his sharp tail. So the bad wolf gave one big jump up into the air, and down on top of the horseshoe crab he came, and the crab just stuck up his sharp pointed tail, and it tickled that wolf in the ribs so very much that the wolf had to laugh whether he wanted to or not, and he laughed so hard that he had a conniption fit, and so he couldn't get the rabbit. Then the horseshoe crab dug away the sand around the stone, and helped Uncle Wiggily get his leg out, and the rabbit was safe, and he thanked the crab and hopped away, and the wolf didn't get him after all. So that's all tonight, if you please, but the next bedtime story will be about Uncle Wiggily and the pink shell, that is, if the red lobster doesn't pinch the stove's legs and make it dance a hornpipe on top of the wash tubs. End of story 11 Story Twelve of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily and the Shell. Uncle Wiggily was lame the next day after he had been caught under the stone when the wolf nearly got him and the horseshoe crab had dug him out. You see, the stone pressed on his leg that had rheumatism in it and it hurt the old gentleman rabbit very much. But he was quite brave, and when he got up in the morning, even though he could hardly limp along, he decided that he would hop down the sandy beach at the seashore and see if he couldn't find his fortune there. "'It is certainly taking me quite a long time to get rich,' he said to himself, as he slowly moved along over the soft sand, "'and perhaps I may never find any diamonds or gold but no matter, I am enjoying myself, and that is something. Still, I would like to see Sammy and Susie Littletail again. And when he thought of the two little rabbit children, he was a bit sad. Then he decided that would never do. So he cheered himself up by singing a little song that went something like this. Don't be sad, just be glad, for the sun is shining, don't be blue, for it's true, clouds have silver lining. Sing and dance, hop and prance, make some one feel jolly. Go away, care, don't you dare make me melancholy. Ha hum, I feel much better after that, said Uncle Wiggily. And he moved his whiskers sideways and up and down, and twinkled his nose, and then went on looking for his fortune. Pretty soon he came to a big snail that was crawling slowly along the beach. "'Have you seen any gold?' asked the rabbit. "'No, I'm sorry to say I haven't,' said the snail, slowly and carefully. "'But I have not gone very far this morning. I have only travelled about as far as from one orange seed to another, and that is not very far, you know. Perhaps later I may find some gold.' "'Then have you seen any diamonds?' asked Uncle Wiggily. "'No, but I saw a dewdrop inside a flower, sparkling in the sunshine,' said the snail, "'and it was brighter than a diamond.' "'That is very pretty, but it is not my fortune,' said the rabbit. "'I must keep on.' So on he went, singing his jolly song, and he kept humming it even when the sun went behind a cloud and it looked as if it were going to storm. The waves of the ocean grew into big billows, and they dashed up on the beach with a booming, thundering sound. "'I think we are going to have a shower,' said the old gentleman rabbit. "'I must look about for another toadstool umbrella.' So he found one growing in the grass a little distance from the water, and he picked it. Then, strapping his valise over his shoulder, he hopped ahead, leaning on his crutch. Pretty soon, not so very long, it began to rain. My! How the drops did come pelting down, harder and harder, but Uncle Wiggily didn't get wet because of his toadstool umbrella. And then, before you could eat a stick of peppermint candy, something hard hit the old gentleman rabbit on the nose. Ha! My umbrella must be leaking, he cried. Then there came a flash of lightning, and a loud clap of thunder, 
and something else hit Uncle Wiggily on the end of his nose. "'Oh, I hope I'm not struck by lightning!' he cried. So he looked up, and he saw that his toadstool umbrella was full of holes, and the reason of this was that it was hailing instead of raining. The raindrops had turned into little round chunks of ice, just like white pebbles, and they were pelting down, and had torn the rabbit's umbrella all to pieces. "'Whatever shall I do?' cried Uncle Wiggily, as he tossed aside the toadstool. "'That is of no use to me now, and there is no place where I can go to get in out of the rain. Oh, my! How those hailstones hurt!' And indeed they did, for they were as large as bird's eggs now, and they were bouncing down all over, and hitting Uncle Wiggily on his ears and nose and all over. He tried to hold his crutch over his head, but that did no good, and then he tried to hold up his valise with the cherry pie in it to shelter himself, but that did no good either. "'Oh, I'll be knocked to pieces by the hailstones!' the rabbit cried. "'Where can I go? Oh, if I only had a shell-house such as the snail carries on her back, I would be all right!' "'Here is a house for you!' cried a little voice and, looking to one side, Uncle Wiggily saw his old friend, the grasshopper, and that grasshopper was beneath a big pink shell that was on the beach, with one edge raised up like a shed. "'Crawl under the shell, and the hailstone can't hurt you,' went on the hopper grass. "'This pink shell is the best kind of a house.' "'Well, I do declare so it is,' agreed Uncle Wiggily and he lost no time in crawling under the pink shell, which was just the color of baby's cheeks. Then how the hailstones did rattle down on that shell! It was just like peas or dried corn falling into a tin pan. Rattlety bang rattlety bang went the hailstones, but they couldn't hurt the grasshopper or Uncle Wiggily now, for the chunks of ice hit on the hard shell and burst to pieces. Then, all of a sudden, Uncle Wiggily heard someone crying. Oh, it was such a sad, pitiful voice. "'Oh, what shall I do? Where can I go?' wailed the voice. "'Someone needs help,' said the rabbit quickly. "'Maybe it's a bear,' suggested the hoppergrass. "'Nonsensicalness!' exclaimed the rabbit. "'I'm going to look.' So he peered out from under the edge of the big pink shell and he saw a little baby crab crawling along with a basket of sea-peanuts in little bags on one claw. "'Oh, I'm so miserable!' cried the little crab. "'I started out to sell peanuts, but the hailstones burst the bags open, and the peanuts came out and they're all wet, and no one will buy wet peanuts. What shall I do?' "'Come right in here,' said Uncle Wiggily kindly. "'We'll help you.' So the little crab crawled beneath the pink shell, where the hailstones couldn't hit him, and when the storm was over, the old gentleman rabbit and the grasshopper built a fire, and they dried out the peanuts. Then the grasshopper took some of his molasses, and he glued the torn bags together, and Uncle Wiggily put back the dry peanuts in them, and then the little crab went off very happy indeed, and sold them for a penny a bag. Ha! The pink shell did us a great kindness, said the old gentleman rabbit, as he hopped out. Now I will look once more for my fortune. Then the grasshopper flew away over the sea again, and the rabbit went on alone, eating a few peanuts the baby crab had given him. And he soon had another adventure. What it was, I'll tell you soon, for the story will be about Uncle Wiggily and the fiddler. That is, if the piano stool doesn't turn into a merry-go-round and whirl about so fast that it makes the milk bottle dizzy. End of story twelve. Story thirteen of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard Roger Garris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Uncle Wiggily and the Fiddler. It was the day after Uncle Wiggily had taken shelter under the pink shell, when the hailstones came down, and the old gentleman rabbit was walking along the sandy beach looking to see what he could see. 
"'You never can tell when you are going to find your fortune in this world,' he said, "'and I may come upon mine any moment. So I must be ready for it.' Then he went on a little farther, and he felt hungry. "'Perhaps there is a bit of cherry pie still in my valise,' he said. So he looked, and, sure enough, there was some pie, and he ate it. It was nearly all gone, and there were only a few crumbs of the pie left, when the old gentleman rabbit heard someone say, "'Oh, how hungry I am! Oh, if I only had something to eat! I wonder where I can find anything!' Then the rabbit looked down, and there was the slow-crawling snail, looking very hungry indeed. "'Oh, ho! So it's you, is it?' asked the rabbit. "'Why, it seems to me you are not very far from the place where I last saw you.' "'That is so. I am not,' answered the snail. "'You see, I go very slowly, and in a whole day I only moved about as far as an ice-cream cone.' I have been looking for something to eat, but I can't find it. Oh, I'll gladly give you what I have left, spoke Uncle Wiggily, as he scattered the crumbs of the cherry pie about, and the snail ate them all up. I don't suppose you have seen anything of my fortune, have you? asked the rabbit, as he wiped his whiskers on a red napkin and closed up his valise. No, I haven't, said the snail but I will tell you something I overheard to-day, and perhaps that will help you. As I was crawling slowly along, I heard two sand-fleas talking together. One said to the other that there was going to be a grand dance of all the sand-fleas on the beach to-night, and that there would be plenty of golden diamonds at the party. Perhaps if you went to it you might find your fortune, that is, if someone had any gold or diamonds they didn't want. "'That's a good idea,' said the rabbit. "'I'll be there, and I'm much obliged to you for telling me. Where do the sand-fleas hold their dance?' "'Down on the beach by the wreck of the old sailing-ship,' answered the snail. "'Be there at the hour of midnight, and I hope you will find your fortune.' "'I'll be there,' said the rabbit. "'Oh, I'll be there.' Then the snail crawled away, and Uncle Wiggily hopped along on the sand but he didn't look for his fortune, as he thought he would find it at the flea's party. "'Since I am going to be up quite late to-night,' he said, "'I had better take a little sleep now.' So he stretched out under some seaweed that he laid over some driftwood for a shady shelter, and soon he was fast asleep. Then, after a while, he awakened and ate his supper, and soon it was midnight, and he set off toward the place where the wreck of the old ship was on the beach for there the sand-fleas were to have their hop and dance. As he came near the place, the old gentleman rabbit heard laughter and talking, and he saw tiny lights flitting about. Then he came still nearer, and he saw a most curious sight. All around in the sand were little pieces of wood set in a circle, and on each piece of wood was a lightning-bug. They lighted up the place like small electric lanterns. There was a large circle of sand, and inside of that was the ballroom where the dance was to take place. It was all decorated with seaweed and moss, and it looked very pretty, with lightning bugs scattered here and there in the green drapery like fairy lights. And then the sand fleas! Oh, there were hundreds of them, and they were hopping all about, sometimes over each other's backs, and around corners, and through the middle while some even turned somersaults, and they were having a glorious time. "'I wonder when the dance is going to begin,' thought Uncle Wiggily. "'I wish it would soon start, for I see that these fleas have on many diamonds, and they also have lots of gold in their pockets. Perhaps, when they dance, they will drop some of the gold and diamonds, and in case they don't want them, I can pick them up and have them for my fortune.' Then, all of a sudden, some of the fleas began to cry out, "'Where is the music? Why doesn't the music start, so that we can dance?' And surely enough, there was no music for the party. Then a big grey flea called out, "'Alas and lack-a-day! We will have no music. I had hired a dozen katydids and a dozen katydidn'ts to come and play for us.' 
but they have just telephoned that they can't come, as their legs are stiff, so we can have no dance as we have no music. Oh, how perfectly dreadful! cried a blue lady flea. And just then some of the other fleas saw Uncle Wiggily looking in at them from behind the old wrecked ship. Perhaps the rabbit can play for us, said some of the fleas. Can you, Mr. Rabbit? No, I can't, he said, and he felt very sorry for them. But I will see if I can find someone who can, for Uncle Wiggily was very kind-hearted, and always did what he could to help. So he strolled down the beach looking for someone to play for the sand fleas, and as he walked along he met a fiddler crab, which is a crab with very long legs. And as soon as he saw that fiddler crab, Uncle Wiggily knew that the long-legged creature could make music. "'Will you come and play for the fleas' party?' asked the rabbit. "'I will make a fiddle out of my crutch, and some seaweed for strings, and you can play it.' "'I will,' said the fiddler crab kindly. "'But who will play the drum? We need a drum. Who will play it?' "'I would, if I had a drum,' said the rabbit bravely. "'I'll be the drum,' suddenly cried a voice, and up from the ocean popped a fish called the Puff Fish, or Sea Robin, and he can make himself look like a blown-up paper bag full of wind. "'I'll be the drum, and you can make me go boom-boom,' said the blowfish. "'Fine!' cried Uncle Wiggily. "'Come on back to the sand fleas' party with me.' So the fiddler crab and the drum fish went along. Then the rabbit soon made a fiddle, with seaweed for strings, and the fiddler crab played it with his long legs, making tunes like, Please buy me an ice-cream cone, and take me on the merry-go-round. And the drumfish puffed himself up like a balloon, and Uncle Wiggily beat him with a soft stick, and there was fine music. Then the sand-fleas hopped and danced about, until they could hop and dance no more but they didn't drop any gold or diamonds, and, when the party was over, the rabbit was as poor as when it started. But still he didn't mind. Then he went to sleep under a pile of seaweed, while the sea robin and the fiddler crab went home in the ocean. And on the next page, in case the egg-beater doesn't get stuck on the rolling pin and make the pie-crust fall through the nutmeg grater, I'll tell you about Uncle Wiggily and the watermelon. End of story 13